Did you know the longest video game marathon is 138 hours? And that was set by someone playing Just Dance, an active video game. Now, we're not here to set a new world record, but we are going to create a spike manager, something that will allow us to play this video game for 138 hours if you so desire. You ready? Then let's learn some game dev. So where we left off was this beautiful parallax background. It moves with us and our spikes move when we actually play the game and it looks awesome. What we need to do now is create an object that is going to manage the creation of all of the spikes in our game. Right now we have a few, but since this is an endless runner, we need to have an infinite amount, not a few. So I'm gonna right click over here on objects and create a new object. And that was a path. Let's try that one more time. Create a new object. And we're gonna call this OBJ Spike Manager. Now before we do anything else with this, we're gonna go back to our room, make sure you have your instances layer selected, and I'm gonna drag that spike object into here, that spike manager. Now traditionally, when you put an object that has no image, because our manager object isn't going to have a sprite, they go in the top left or the top right corner. They go somewhere that you're going to see them so that you know they're inside of there, because if we don't have our spike manager in this level, then it's not going to be able to run its code and it won't work at all. So we're putting it in here now so that as we start adding code to it, we don't forget to put it in there the first time we test it. And then we start pulling out our hair saying, why isn't making any spikes? What's going on? What's wrong with it? Why is Game Maker broken? Because that's a very common <laughs> occurrence uh, when so you think something should be happening and especially when you know your code is right, but you just forgot to put that object in your room. Okay, now we can close our room and let's go ahead and add a create event to our spike manager. What this one is gonna do is it is going to set the variables that we need to control actually spawning the spikes. So we're just gonna call this data right now and the variable that we're gonna set right now is called spawn rate, and we're gonna set it equal to 100. Now, what this 100 means is going to be frames. Now, our game, if we open up our game options, I can actually show you here. Our game uses 60 game frames per second. So 60 frames per second, 60 FPS, 60, well, yeah, 60 FPS, that's what it is. Now. You've probably heard of FPS before. We've talked about it a little bit when we were doing sprites, but let's do a quick breakdown on what it is and why that's important. So in the beginning of games, they used a lot less frames per second. And that's because the computer running the game has to actually check things every single frame, like our step event that we've had before. But it also means that it has to redraw everything every single frame because things move around. Now, that takes a lot of processing power, sometimes a lot of GPU in there, and older computers weren't able to do that. So, back in the day, you might have games that were running at 15 or 30 FPS, and sometimes that was actually okay. You didn't need a high FPS if you were playing a Final Fantasy uh, or a game that didn't have a lot of movement. You just didn't need it. Nowadays, most games are set at 60 frames per second, but you may have also heard that some of them are at 144 or even 240. Now, the frames per second and the refresh rate of your monitor are intrinsically linked. Your monitor refreshes, which means it actually redraws the image on your screen a certain amount of times called the refresh or the hertz. Now, most monitors have at least 60 hertz. A lot of gaming monitors go up to 144, some at 240, and I think 500 was the most recently announced hertz, like refresh rate on a 1080p panel. What that means is you could potentially change your FPS, your game frames per second, all the way up there. But you only wanna do that if a monitor is capable of it. Because if your game is running at 60 FPS, 
or your game is running, let's say, at 144 FPS, but the monitor you're actually looking at only refreshes 60 times a second, you're not going to get any benefit out of that. It's going to be a waste of CPU. So 60 is a great middle ground. It's what almost every game that comes out nowadays runs at. It looks really smooth, and it isn't too intensive for a game to run at, even if your game starts growing and getting larger. So all of that to say, 60 frames per second is what we want. That's what we're going to leave it at. And that means this number of 100 is going to be frames in our game. So 60 is one second, which means that 120 is two, so 100 is a little bit less than two seconds. Now this is important because what we're gonna do is set an alarm inside of our spike manager just like this. We type alarm and now that is a built-in variable. It also has a couple of functions along with it and a constant. But what we're gonna do is access the alarm directly like this. We're gonna do a square bracket, which is the character right next to P. You just press it without holding shift or anything. And we're gonna put a zero inside. And then we're gonna close that with the character right next to the one you just opened it with. And we're gonna set that equal to spawn rate. So an alarm in Game Maker is just like an alarm in real life. You set it for a certain amount of time. When that time elapses, the alarm goes off. In this case, the alarm will go off after 100 frames and all of the code inside of alarm number zero will then activate. Currently, there is no code in alarm zero, which means that nothing is going to happen because we have to have an event for that alarm for the alarm to even trigger or for it to start counting down or doing anything at all. So let's go ahead and add that event. Alarm is right underneath step and we're gonna do alarm zero. You can see here there are 12 alarms that are built into every single object. We want alarm zero. I'm starting with zero because that's the first one. You could use any alarm, it doesn't matter at all. Traditionally, you start with the first one and work your way down the list. But yeah, we could use alarm seven if we wanted to or whatever, it doesn't matter. But we're gonna do alarm zero. So this is actually going to spawn a spike every single time it triggers. Now, what we want to do is set it so that at the very end, so I'm going to come down here, we're going to call this reset the alarm, and we're just going to do the exact same thing. Alarm zero equals spawn rate. And later on, as the game progresses and plays, we're going to decrease this spawn rate so the spawn the spikes will come faster and faster and the game will get more and more difficult that's why we're using a variable here instead of just 100 because changing 100 here wouldn't work we'd actually have to we'd have to type that value in and we can't type it in as the game is running but we can change our variable spawn rate as the game is running we're not going to do it in this video but we will tackle that later on so this will reset the alarm every single time it runs and it will reset it to 100 so every 100 frames of our game this alarm is going to trigger so now we want to actually spawn the spike the function to do that is called instance underscore create underscore layer now, we need to figure out where this is actually going to be happening. We talked about instance create layer, so you should be semi-familiar with it, but I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and I'm gonna bring the text size up a little bit. So we have this function and we need an X and a Y coordinate. Now for this game, we want the X coordinate to be to the right outside of our room. So I guess we do need that room open after all. We're gonna open it back up. And let's take a look. If we, we look at the width of our room, it is 1920. So we know that it's probably gonna be at least that size, but if we click on a spike, and we have to click on instances to be able to even click on a spike, 
If we move a spike all the way outside of the room so it can't be seen at all, and then we double click on it, let's take a look. The X value is 2016. So we need at least this number for when we spawn a spike to be all the way outside of the room. Otherwise, when it gets made, it might be made partially inside of the room, which is not gonna look near as good. So, let's go ahead and go back to our workspace. That X value we will put at 2016. Now we need a Y value. Currently, we have spikes on the bottom and on the top. The top spikes are at zero. If we look down here, we can actually see the X and Y values of our instance that we click on. So this has a Y value of zero. The bottom ones have a Y value of 928. So we need to choose between those and we might want one value sometimes and one value another. It's just gonna be a random choice. So what's cool is there's a function for this. But we don't, we can put it right inside of here, but I want to keep our code as clean as possible and make it easy to alter if we ever need to. So what I'm going to do is actually come up here and I'm going to create a variable outside of this function that will be the Y coordinate. And I'm doing this to show you two things. First, I'm going to show you a local variable and what it looks like and how it works. And then I'm going to keep it to keep the code nice and clean because then we'll just be able to put that variable inside of this function and you'll be able to read it really easily because we're going to name it and you'll know exactly what it's there for. That way if you ever come back and you need to change things, you absolutely can. And later on, we're going to check that variable or we can check the Y position of the spike, eh, either one. But we'll check that variable to know whether it's on top or bottom because we'll need to do something with that spike later on. So here is a local variable. We say var y spawn. So this function is a very special one. We don't need parentheses, and it also changes the scope of the variable, which other functions can't do. So we say var, and then we give it a variable name just like we're used to doing, and now it turns yellow instead of blue. What that means is this variable y spawn, we can never access it outside of the alarm zero event. Now the reason for that is it is limited in what we call scope to what we can actually do inside of this event. So if I wanted to do something with y spawn here, it actually turns blue because it's never been created or used before that game maker can tell, at least in this create event. So local variables are powerful because they allow us to save data, manipulate it, use it, but just inside of one event or even smaller, just inside of one loop or if statement. So we will use local variables as we go because it's a great way to not waste memory, to not clutter up your, your object with variables that you only use once because this will, get, this will never be accessed or used or shown again outside of this alarm event. So we've got var y spawn. Now we need to set a value. Now there are two possible choices and fortunately GameMaker has a function for this exact thing. The function choose. So we'll open this up and now we can see that it has x1, x2, x3 and dot dot dot. What that means is we just need to pass in values and GameMaker will select one of them. So one of the values is zero. That's gonna be the top spike. The other value is 928. So let's come back over here and type 928. Now our Y spawn will be one of these two values. That's all that it can be. That's great. And now we can type that variable into our function and it's nice and clean to read and if we ever need to change these up because we change the room size or we change the origin or the object whatever we can do that right here so we have the x coordinate we have the y coordinate now we need the layer name and that is right here 
So we renamed all of the background layers because we will use those layer names later on. But right now, the instances layer has remained exactly the same. So we're just going to call it instances. But we have to do it inside of a string or these quotes. So I'm going to call it instances and close the quote. Now, a very common occurrence is that you will mistype this. GameMaker is not going to check for typos. It doesn't know about them. If you type it wrong, it will fail. And I talked about this before, but make sure that you've got this typed exactly as you see it here. If you say instance instead of instances, it will not run. I mean, it'll run, but the first time this alarm goes off, it will crash. So make sure you've got that typed correctly. And the object we want to create is obj spike. Not the spike manager. That's what this is and that's what it's doing. We just want to create a spike. So let's press F5 and run our game. And now we should have an infinite amount of spikes inside of our game. So the first few here don't appear because there's a bunch of blank space in our room, but now you can see there's a spike. But that's just one, okay, there's a second. Now that looks about the space of 100 frames. So where are all of the other spikes in our game? <gasps> Look, there they are. Did you, did you catch that? W the spikes that we can't see are spawning up here outside of our room. And the reason for that is we are spawning it at zero for the Y coordinate. And so zero for the Y coordinate on a spike that hasn't been rotated looks like this. It's completely hidden outside of the room. So what we need to be able to do is rotate the spikes that we have created. Now, we're gonna do that in the next video because we're also gonna want to do things like changing the sprites of our spikes so that there's a little more variety. So the last thing I wanna do is just go into our room and we're gonna to go to the spike and I just wanna add in two more spikes here. And we'll rotate these around and we'll do that. And this will give us, I'm gonna move these a little bit too because this is actually kind of hard. Like I made it through but it's kind of difficult honestly. But this will allow us to have a full set of spikes and then when the game begins and it starts spawning spikes, it will make them right here and there shouldn't be much of a gap at all right there. So that's everything we're going to cover right now. In the next video, we're going to talk about how to take the spike we just created and then alter its properties, change its sprite, maybe rotate it, uh, and do those things and how exactly that works. Because working with other objects inside of Game Maker is essential, but it can also be a little tricky if it's the first time you're doing it. So thank you for joining me. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments below. If you have any features you wanna see added to this game, let me know. You can find me on Twitter, and you can support me on Patreon if you want to throw a dollar my way for this awesome content. But that's what I've got for you. Thanks for joining me. And as always, keep making, keep learning, and I'll see you in the next video.